Okay, so in this video, we'll be talking about the capacitors connected in parallel. So for the capacitors in parallel, you know that the potential difference across each capacitor is the same. That means that the potential difference across C1 is equal to the potential difference across C2, which is also the potential difference across C3. And then we denote the potential difference across them as V. And then V is actually the EMF of the battery. By using the principle of charge conservation, you know that the charge transfer by the battery is equal to the summation of all the charges on the individual capacitors. Okay, Q1 equal to C1 V, Q2 equal to C2 V, and Q3 equal to C3 V. So by using this, you can get the equivalent capacitance for the capacitors in parallel. Okay, recall that just now, you know that for the capacitors in series, the Q on each capacitor is the same. And now, for the capacitors in parallel, the V on across each capacitor is the same. Okay? Therefore, you don't denote V1, V2, or V3 because V1 equal to V2 equal to V3 equal to V. And then for the capacitors in series just now, you know that Q1 equal to Q2 equal to Q3 equal to Q. Okay, so for example, in this question, you know that the equivalent capacitance of all the capacitors is this. Okay, you just simply sum them up. Okay, please find the total capacitance. Now you imagine yourself to be a current, okay? So this is a current, okay? If you are the current, then now at this junction, you can choose whether to walk this path or to walk this path or to walk this path. If you want to walk this path, when you are passing through the capacitor A, now you have no choice but to pass through the capacitor B. When you do not have a freedom to choose whether you want to go through or not, then you can say that A and B are connected in series. For example, if you have a freedom to, cho to choose, for example, you can choose whether you want to walk this path or to walk this path, then you know that this one and this are connected in parallel. Okay? So now, you know that A and B are connected in series, and then you use this formula to get the equivalent capacitance for a and B. So you can simplify this diagram into this diagram. And then now you know that this capacitor and this capacitor are in parallel because you can choose whether you want to walk this path or to walk this path. Okay. So since they are in parallel, then you use this formula to find the equivalent capacitance. Then you simplify this diagram into this. So now if you want to walk through the 30 microfarad capacitor, you have no choice but to walk through the 120 microfarad capacitor as well. Since you do not have a freedom to choose, then you can say that they are connected in series. And then you also find the equivalent capacitance of them. So you finally simplify the diagram to this, and then you know that they are connected in parallel because you can choose whether you want to walk this path or to walk this path. So you use this formula to find the total capacitance. Okay? The key part here is that you simplify them one by one. Okay, let's do some questions. Three capacitors of equal capacitance C can be arranged so as to obtain the maximum and also the minimum capacitance. If the minimum capacitance is P and the maximum capacitance is Q, the ratio of P over Q is... To get the minimum capacitance, you just connect the capacitors in series. And then you know that the equivalent capacitance P is C over 3. So to get the maximum capacitance, you 
connect the capacitors in parallel because you can straight away sum them up. And then you know that the ratio of P over Q is 1 over 9. Okay. But then for the for the questions to be even harder, sometimes they don't put numerical value. Sometimes they straight away say that n capacitors of equal value, equal capacitors, blah blah blah. Okay. The two questions are the same. I just simply change the three, the word three into n. Okay. So you use exactly the same procedure. And then you finally get the answer is P over Q equal to 1 over N squared. Okay, where the N just now is 3. So you know that 1 over N squared equal to 1 over 3 squared equal to 1 over 9. Okay. Two capacitors which have the same capacitance can be connected in series or parallel. Which statement is true about the charge stored for the same DC voltage supply. So you know that they can be connected in series or in parallel. For the series, your equivalent capacitance is C over 2. For the parallel, the equivalent capacitance is 2C. And then the total charge in the capacitance is C over 2 times V. And then for the parallel circuit, the total charge is equal to 2C times V. Okay, so you know that the series connection stores an amount of charge which is one quarter to that of the parallel connection. Okay, so this should be one quarter. One quarter. So now, the series connection stores an amount of charge which is one quarter of that of the parallel connection and then the parallel connection stores an amount of charge four times that of the series connection. Two identical capacitors X and Y are connected in parallel to a battery. When switch S is open, the potential difference across S is V because this is parallel with this. And then the charge stored is Q and then Y is uncharged. When switch S is closed, what is the potential difference across Y and the charge stored in Y? Okay, you know that capacitor X is connected in parallel with capacitor Y. So you know that the potential difference across S is equal to the potential difference across capacitor Y. Okay, so by using Q equal to CV, you get this formula. And then it states that two identical, two identical capacitors. So you know that CX is equal to CY. When CX is equal to CY, then QX is equal to QY. Okay, so you know that the potential difference across here is equal to the potential difference across here, which is also equal to the potential difference across here. And then from this formula, you know that QX is also equal to QY. So, okay, the answer is this. Okay, now you are given a very complicated capacitor. This is one type of dielectric. This is another type of dielectric. And then this is another type of dielectric. From this diagram, you know that this is parallel with this. And then this is in series with this. How do you know? Let's say you are the current. You can choose whether to walk this path or to walk this path. So you know that this one is in parallel with this one. And then if you want to choose this path, once you get through E2, you have to get through E3. So you know that E2 and E3 are in series. So I draw the equivalent diagram of this one. C1 equal to E1 E0 A over 2D because the distance from here to here is 
2D. C2 is equal to E2 E0 A over D because the separation between this is only D. And then C3 is E3 E0 A over D. Okay, so you know that C2 and C3 are connected in series, then you use the diagram to find the equivalent capacitance of C2 and C3. And then finally, you know that C1 is in parallel with this. So you straight away sum them up to find the equivalent capacitance of the whole capacitor. A dielectric is inserted into an air fuel parallel plate capacitor of capacitance 20 microfarad so that only half of the space between the plates is filled. Okay, so this is the dielectric and then this is only air. And then these two are the plates of the parallel plate capacitor. If the dielectric constant is 5, what is the final capacitance of the capacitor? You know that if you are the current, then you can choose to walk this path or to walk this path. Then you know that this is in parallel with this. Since the capacitors are connected in parallel, then you use this equation to find the equivalent capacitor. A parallel plate capacitor filled with plastic is charged by a 4 volt battery. The area of one plate is 200 cm squared. The thickness and dielectric constant of the plastic layer is 1 mm and 3.2 respectively. Please calculate the capacitance of the capacitor. By using this formula, you can get the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor. Please determine the energy stored inside the capacitor. You use the formula U equal to half CV square to find the energy stored inside the capacitor. Please determine the work done by the battery while charging the capacitor. Work done by battery equal to QV, okay? And then Q is equal to CV, okay? So from this, you know that this value is twice of this value. And then please explain the difference between the answers in 2 and 3. You know that the energy stored inside the capacitor is only half of the work done by the battery. Another half of the work done by battery is dissipated as heat energy in the connecting wires or any resistance. The battery is then removed. Okay, just now there's one battery here and then you know that the battery is removed. When you see this phrase, you know that in your answer, you can use the principle of charge conservation because this principle is only valid for the individual, for the isolated capacitor. Okay, and then the blasted layer is pulled out half from the plates. Please determine the new capacitance of the capacitor. The capacitance of the air field capacitor is this. And then the capacitance of the plastic field capacitor is this. Okay, so for the capacitance of the air field capacitor, you are actually referring to this part. Okay, and the capacitance of plastic field capacitor, you are actually referring to this part. Can you say that this part is a capacitor? No, because the parallel plate is here only, so I can only consider this region. So when a dielectric is outside the capacitor, this part is no longer a capacitor anymore. Okay, then you know that the area A1 refer to the A1 refers to this. Okay, and then the A2 refers to this. Okay, so you know that when you are a current, let's say you are a current, then you can choose to walk this path or to walk this path. Then the cap then I say that the capacitors are connected in parallel. So you can find the total capacitance like this. Please determine the work done needed to pull the plastic layer. 
Okay, by using the charge conservation, you know that the final charge of the system is equal to the initial charge of the system. That means that it's equal to the charge of the system before you pull the plastic. Okay, so before you pull the plastic, Q equal to this value. Because you know that just now, the Q is this value and then the V is this value. So you just copy here. Okay, so you know the initial charge of the system before you pull the plastic. And then the Q before you pull the plastic is equal to the Q after you pull the plastic. So the energy stored in a new capacitor is this. The Q is the same and then the C is the new capacitance. So the word done is the energy stored inside the new system minus the energy stored inside the initial system, which is this. Okay? And the difference between them is the work done to pull the plastic layer. In the next video, we'll be talking about CR charging circuit. Thank you.